Hi everyone, welcome back. In the last video we set up our posts so that we can create new posts and attach them to a user. Now in this video I want to do a little bit of fine tuning. I want to validate what the user sends us. I want to output an error if, well, basically we receive an empty post field. And I want to also give back a success message when a post was created. Now then in the next video we'll have a look at outputting these posts in our dashboard. Let's start. So validation isn't something new. We've done that before. So it should be done really quick. Here in my post controller, I want to add it. And as you are aware, I can just call my this validate function in my controller here. And I will pass the request and then an array with, well, my rules basically. Now I only got one field. This is the body field. And I want to have a rule of, well, it being required. It shouldn't be empty. And let's say we don't want it to be longer than 1000 characters. Okay, so this should be the validation. And in case we're not getting a validation error, but instead we're saving this, I want to give a success message. Now, therefore, I will wrap this input or this saving of the post in an if statement because this will only return true if it was successfully inserted. Well, and if it was not successfully inserted, I want to give back an error message saying, well, there was an error while trying to insert your post or to create your post. So in case of success, what I will do is I will pass a message. And let's say this message by default is, is, is the bad outcome that we say there was an error. Now, if we're successful, then I want to alter that message to say, post successfully created. Now, how do we pass this message? Well, the good thing is when we're redirecting here, we can chain another method here and say with. Now the with method allows us to pass a message. So here I'm just passing as, um, an array where I have a key that says message and I'll have um, then the value of the message. So here, this will just be message. And in the case of only passing one string, I could also just pass the string, but oops, didn't want to do it. But here, I'll, I'll use the array because what you might want to do is you might want to send the success message with a key of success and a fail message with a key of fail so that you can differently style the output you're showing in the template. But in this case, so I don't think we'll get ever, we'll ever get a fail. So just have one styling should be okay here. Okay, so now we're passing back our message here and we obviously pass back an error if validation fails. So now in my dashboard, I want to output this error. Now we did something similar in the welcome view, if you remember. We already have a block here where we output our validation errors. Now I could just copy that and put it into the dashboard, but that would not be good coding style. We would be repeating ourselves. So the better way is to create a new include. Remember, includes are just pieces of code which we use in different places throughout our application. So here I'll just create a new, let's call it message block.blade.php. And in this message block, all I do is, not that, all I do is I cut this part here and insert it here. That's all. And then here in my welcome view, I will use the blade expression include to, well, target this message block inclusion. And then I do the same here in my dashboard at the very top. And now here I already use a certain styling. So you could want to put these rows and columns out of that include so that you can better control where it is positioned in the view where you include it because this way it will always have, well, this column positioning here. But in this case, that's fine. So here um, we have a problem. In a welcome view, we're just using this validation error back. But in the dashboard, we also get a success message, which I want to display. Well, it isn't a real problem. I'll just add it in my message block here. 
So let's say if here I'm checking if I have errors. Now I'll do the same check for if I have, well, a message. I can do this by checking if session has message is true because this message will be stored in our session and we gave it a key of message therefore checking with the Laravel helper method has here on the session facade if message is there will well give us basically the answer if we have to output a message. Now this will always be true when we created a post but it won't be true if we're accessing the dashboard through other means. So I'll close this block here and then I'll just copy the formatting of this block here. But now here I'm not outputting a list or anything like this. All I output here is really just, well, the message. I get it with the get helper method on the session facade. So get message will output the message here. Let's see if that works. Did I include it here? Yes. Let me reload. And now let me submit an empty post. As you can see, we're getting an error here. Now let me create a real post. Now we get our success message up here. So that's really cool. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to improve the styling of this box a little bit. So in my message block here, I want to basically have a reddish block for, for the errors and a green block for the message. And yes, the message could be the the creation failed part, but as I said, in our local development environment, creating the post, the, this database action will probably never fail. But in a real application, you should have some kind of differentiation uh, between those cases. So here what I will do is I'll just give this div another class where I say error, and here I will say success. And now in my public, source in my CSS, my main CSS file, I'll just create those two classes. So arrow will just have a border which is, yeah, let's say red, and it should have a red background color or reddish. So let me just pick maybe the, something like, like this here and give it a red colored text. And now the success will be well basically the opposite. It will have a green border. It will have a background color which should be like a light green here. And it should have a color a text which has the color of green. Let's save this, reload this page and try this again. Yeah, okay now there is something else I have to do just recognized. So I want to make sure in my error class that my unordered list, that I remove the list style, none, and I remove all margin and padding of this unordered list. So let me try this again now. Yeah, that looks better. Now last thing which I might do is center it and this is the same for error and success. I'll therefore create one rule where I just set the text alignment to center. Now, if we reload this again, yeah. And now let's create another post here. Wonderful. So now this is working. Uh, we got our validation and our success message and nice way to output that. So see you in the next videos. Bye.